Hi. Good evening, teacher. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Hello, Fernando. How are you doing tonight? Are you guys okay? What about the rain? Is it raining in your places? Is it raining? Raining. <laughs> Is it raining? Hello, Rosa Stella. Welcome. Hello, teacher. Hi. No. Oh, all right. All right. <laughs> well, we were waiting for uh, a heavy storm. Yeah, it seems like uh, um, thunders, right? It seems like thunders and oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, guts. Well, we are going to um, be able to finish the class, okay? We will try to keep everything all right. Okay, people. I hope everybody had a very good weekend. How was your weekend? Como estuvo su fin de semana? How was your weekend? Was it good? Good. Bad. Good? Okay, nice. Nice. All right. Not bad. Mm -hmm. Relaxing. Relaxing. Okay. Relaxing. Okay. Ronaldo, I'm sorry, but I I see that my audio today it is okay. Today is all right. So please check your audio. Uh are you bueno? Si no escucha, pues como me va a estar escuchando, ¿verdad? Sí, Vamos a poner un chat. Oh, okay. Ronaldo is under a very big storm. It's a heavy storm where he is. Okay, it says, oh, okay, Ronaldo. Hi, teacher. Okay, Hello, me... Isabel. Eh, yes. Comentarle que está cayendo una tormenta súper fuerte. Si me saca la, la, de la reunión y me vuelvo a meter es por la señal. Okay, okay, let's try to get connected. And if it happens, please reconnect. Try to reconnect as much as you can, please. All right. Hello. I the problem in the rain. The same problem, right, Ronaldo? Okay, but now you can hear me now. Can you hear me now? Oh, okay. Uh, hello, Carlos Ernesto, tell me. Hola, eh, mira, teacher, fíjese que ahora tengo que hacer unos pases este, de un país de fiscales. Y nada más voy a estar como oyente prácticamente. Ok. It's ok. No problem, Carlos Ernesto. Thank you for informing. Okay. All right. Thank you very Gracias. much for informing. Yeah, just remember to watch the video later. Ok. All right. Oh, ok. It's ok, Marta Alicia. Yes, I understand about the rain, guys. I, I really understand that the weather usually affects, right? Usually affects our connections, the Wi-Fi and our devices, the power, right? So the energy. So yes, I do understand. But let's try, please, to reconnect. Si por casualidad nos llegáramos a desconectar, eh, ustedes por favor tengan la paciencita de que se restablezca todo y podamos terminar la clase porque si no la terminamos si no cumplimos nuestras dos horas nos va a tocar venir otro día más ¿verdad? extender un día más en el programa y pues eh, creo que es mejor digamos ¿verdad? ir en tiempo ¿verdad? terminando a tiempo Así que eh, les agradeceré que si se les desconecta, traten de reconectarse nuevamente de alguna manera, ¿verdad? Mm, si se nos va el Wi-Fi, tengamos por ahí los datos para conectarnos con los datos inmediatamente, por favor, para que podamos terminar esta noche. Bien, entonces comencemos y démosle con todo. Vamos a empezar. We are going to start. Let's get started with... Um, uh, the attendance list. I have to call the roll. So please, everybody remember, you have to turn your camera on. And when I call your name, you say present, okay? So let's start. Alma Yamilet Hernandez de Vasquez. 
present. Right. Eh, Carlos Edgardo Vázquez Espino. Present. Ok, Débora Yamilet Campos Cortés. Carlos Ernesto Galán Serrano. Present. Ok. This way. Um, Fernando Enrique Martínez Macín. Hi, teacher, present. Okay, Fernando Noel Mauricio Cintigo. Okay. Eh, Gabriela Alice Hernández Cruz. Present, teacher. Okay. Helen Saraí Hernández Larín. Miss Helen, are you there? I haven't seen any report about Helen. Uh, have you seen any report? Not right. Okay. Now, Jose Adonai Mendoza Aguillon. Present, teacher. Okay. Jose Antonio Campos Rivas. Present, teacher. Okay, welcome. Juan Carlos Gavidia Alparo. Present teacher. Right. Maria Isabel Rivas Guevara. Okay. Ronaldo Josué Guerrero Hernández. Present teacher. Present. Hey, Marta Alicia Rivera Sosa. She's just a listener right now. Rosa Estela Polanco Garcia. Present teacher. Samuel Eduardo Araniva Galvez. Saúl Álvarez Pacheco. Stephanie Magalia Maya Reyes. Present teacher. There you are. Veronica Beatriz Celso de Saldaña. Well, I remember she was having trouble too. Okay, people. So today we have to continue with the topic that we are studying. Remember that the simple present is kind of extends and there is no other way to master this than practicing it. And remember they are four skills. Listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Tonight, we want to um, do some exercises. Let's do, as a manner of feedback, we are going to practice the, a, a really short conversation that we have on page number 12. And then we are going to continue with the negative statements. So remember the... Um, auxiliary do and does with the particle not, with the word not, and the short forms, right? The short forms, contracted forms, don't and doesn't. And we want to talk about things that you don't do in your job, things that are not your responsibility in your job. So we are going to stay in that context. But at the beginning, uh, allow me just to Mm, introduce the class, all right? I uh, will introduce the class. Our topic in your class number four is negative statements. Remember, simple present tense, right? Simple present tense, negative statements. Okay, negative statements. Remember, these are in the simple present tense. It means statement is not just a sentence, it's an idea, a complete idea, okay? And it can be compound for two or more ideas too. But the, um, let's say the, um, you need where we condense all our ideas. It's called sentence, all right? Sentence. We can call these ideas and group of ideas like statements, okay? 
They can be negative, affirmative, interrogative. So that's why we call statements sometimes, and sometimes, sometimes we call them sentences, even though both are hmm, in a similar meaning, okay? They have a similar meaning. All right then, the class objective for our class number four. The class objective to make negative sentences in the present tense, okay? To use the, uh, to learn how to use the auxiliaries don't and doesn't, all right? And we are going to learn how to express the activities that are not in our list of responsibilities, things that we are not hired for, okay? So our agenda tonight, our agenda is that we want, well, we presented the class objective already. And uh, we have a role play conversation, as I was saying, on the page number 12, right? Page number 12 we have, or 11, if I'm not wrong. Okay, then. And then we want to talk about someone else's activities. We want to practice the third person just uh, as a manner of um recalling the usage of the conjugation of verbs in the third person, okay? Then we have the simple present negative statements. Uh, we know the grammar already, so we are going to practice them. We are going to use them. Uh, we, we have some grammar spots in our manual. Tenemos algunas eh, páginas dentro de nuestro manual que son de gramática, en donde ustedes Vamos a ir viendo que ustedes pueden ubicarse para que cuando quieran eh, es, elaborar en su mente una idea negativa en el sentido de que usted quiere expresar algo que no es parte de sus responsabilidades, utilice ese esquema, ¿verdad? Y pues lo vaya haciendo como práctico en su mente, ¿ok? Then, in the break of rooms, we want to talk about money and perks. Perks, benefits, laboral, right? Laboral perks. Um, we are going to do the reading and writing activities on pages from 11 to the page 14. And the session one-on-one -on -one for today is for number four in our list. The student number four is Deborah, okay? Deborah. Ah, well, I don't remember if she's got the letter H at the end. Okay, we're going to say Deborah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's start then with this feedback. We want to do a role play conversation. We want to make this conversation kind of, um, uh, in this case, practical, practical, okay? In our manuals, we are going to find this uh, conversation and we have some comprehension activity right, be right below it. So let's go and read the conversation on page number 11. We are talking about someone else's activities, okay? Someone else's activities. Someone else's activities. There are activities that are yours and there are activities that aren't yours, that are from someone else, right? From someone else. So those are someone else's activities. Uh, for example, if you're under the secretary, you don't do activities as a secretary. There is a secretary in the company, okay? There is a secretary in the company with those responsibilities. So this is what we are going to talk about, talking about someone else's activities in the workplace, okay? What are we going to talk right now? Someone else's activities, right? Someone else's activities. Okay, let's move right there to the manual. And on page number 11, we have an activity two. Let's read the instructions. Who wants to read the instructions? Who wants to read the instructions? Gabriela, please, read the instructions. 
Listen to your teacher read the conversation. Then practice with a partner. Very good. Okay, I will read it twice. Okay, I will read the conversation twice. The first time you just listen to. Okay, and the second time you with your microphones off, you try to imitate everything I am reading. Okay, so let's start over. Sonia and Maud are talking. Okay, what does Dominic do? Well, she's the secretary. Oh, I see. What does she do every day exactly? Ah, I see your point. Well, she types reports and sends emails every day. She is a hardworking woman. Absolutely. Does she arrive early? Yeah, she is the first person to arrive in the office. Right, with your microphones off, imitate. I want to see your mouth moving, your lips moving, okay? What does Dominic do? Well, she's a secretary. Oh, I see. What does she do every day exactly? Oh, I see your point. Well, she types reports and sends emails every day. She is a hardworking woman. Absolutely. Does she arrive early? Yeah, she's the first person to arrive in the office. Okay. Is there any questions so far about the vocabulary in this conversation? What is a teacher in Spanish? I see your point. Ah, ya veo su punto. Okay. Uh, o a lo que usted se refiere. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of this unit, we said that we have two, um, well, one question for both, okay? For both meanings. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, my eyes I are kind of tired with those. Uh, with those um, glasses, but now I feel comfortable now. All right, look, we have this question. What does Dominic do? Do you remember that at the beginning of this unit, I said, for example, what do you do? What do you do? We can ask to, I'm sorry, we can um, answer with two types of answers. Which answers? Ah, your professional occupation and the activities you do, right? The activity that belongs to your contract, okay? Para su contrato, por lo que usted ha sido contratada. Entonces, usted puede decir, o la, digamos, la persona ha sido contratada para una actividad y cuando hacen esta pregunta, what do you do? Y usted le puede contestar de las dos maneras. With your profession, or with the activity you are hired for, okay? Y es lo que sucede acá. Uh, Sonia asks, what does Dominique do? She's asking about Dominique, right? What does she do with are their acti her activities? But then she says, well, Matt answers, well, she's a secretary, but that was not the answer that uh, Sonia was looking for. She was looking for the activity activities that um, Dominique does every day. So she reconstructs the, uh, the question and asks again and says, what does she do every day exactly? Exactly, okay? And she adds every day. This is a very good strategy to avoid any confusion, right? Es una estrategia muy buena para evitar cualquier confusión. Porque la misma pregunta puede contestar las dos respuestas. Pero si ya la hacemos más específica, agregándole, como decíamos la vez pasada, time expressions, ¿verdad? Every day. Y todavía le ponemos una palabra que 
enfatice que estoy refiriéndome a algo en específico. Exactly. Okay. Then changes, right? It changes the meaning. So it says, oh, I see your point. That is why this person is answering this way, right? Oh, I see your point. Well, then he starts to talk about the activities that Dominique does in the, in the workplace. All right, let's do it again. We will read it and then we are going to practice. What does Dominique do? Well, she's a secretary. Oh, I see. What does she do every day exactly? Oh, I see your point. Well, she types reports and sends emails every day. She is a hardworking woman. Absolutely. Does she arrive early? Yeah. She is the first person to arrive in the office. Okay. Any other question do you have in this conversation? No questions? No? Okay. Now, let's listen to Stephanie as Sonia, okay? Stephanie plays Sonia and Jose Adonai plays Matt, okay? You may start, Stephanie. What, do, what does Dominique do? Well, she's a secretary. Oh, I see. What does she do every day exactly? Oh, I see your point. Well, she types reports and sends emails every day. She's a hard, hard working woman. Absolutely. Does she arrive early? Yeah, she is the first person to arrive in the in the office. All right. And let's look at the exclamation marks and the interrogation marks, okay? The question marks. So we need to intonate. We need to intonate correctly, all right? To give meaning to this conversation and to add some Parrot here, emotions, right? Okay, guys, we are going to uh, practice this conversation in the breakout room, and you are going to um, complete the figure figure it out activity we have right below it. Uh, one second. Okay, here in the in the manual, you have this activity number three. It's figure it out. Figure it out means that you have to see which of the verbs you have in these sentences is the correct form of the verb. So you are going to circle which of those forms of the verbs are correct in the sentence. Okay, this is according to the conversation. So let's go and do this in the breakout room, all right? Okay, there you have it on the WhatsApp, and now I'm going to open the rooms for you to practice. Okay, one uh, recommendation is that here, this is the moment we have to solve the dots. What are we going to do in the breakup rooms? ¿Qué es lo que vamos a hacer en el breakup room ahorita? A ver, ¿tenemos todos claro lo que vamos a hacer? What are we going to do? Can someone explain it? Creo que yo no entendí, teacher. All right, no problem. No problem. We are going to repeat. We are going to role play the conversation. Practice the conversation. 
okay? One student is going to be Sonia and the other student is going to be Matt. And then you will complete, when you finish, you complete the figure it out activity. Activity number three, Pirko, the correct form of the verb in those sentences. Better now? Okay, All right. teacher, creo que sí. <laughs> okay, <laughs> don't worry. You can ask again if you are not um, convinced, <laughs> okay? So you can ask the times you need. We'll try because we have one, two, three, four. Uh, actually, Ronaldo, are you going to participate in this activity? One, two, three, four. Uh, let me just to see the five. All right. Jose Antonio, are you going to participate? Hola, teacher. Are you able to participate? In the breakout room? Yes. Okay, okay. So, just allow me to see who else is with the situation. Okay. Well, Carlos Ernesto is not able, right? Veronica is not able and Ronaldo is not able either. Okay, let's see. Isabel, Juan Carlos, Rosa Estela, you're able, right? And then Fernando, Gabriela, and Jose Antonio, right? Jose Adonai and Samuel Araniva. And then we have Carlos Edgardo. Oh, well, actually, Marta Alicia is having trouble. Marta Alicia, are you able to participate? Marta Alicia? Yes, teacher. All right, thank you. Fernando, Stephanie, and... Fernando Noel, right? Then Alma Yamilet, and here we've got the problem. All right, I will send Gabriela to practice with Alma, okay? So there we are, guys. Let's hope that everybody gets the objective. Excuse me. Vaya, Hello. si querés, yo soy Sonia y tu Matt, y luego le damos la vuelta. Ok. Vaya, what does Dominic do? Um, wait. The kid is a secretary. Oh, I see. What does she do every day exactly? Oh. And she continue with she typical record and sex. She may every day she is and uh, working for man women. Absolutely, does she arrive early? Arrive early. Yeah. 
she is the fixed uh, person to river uh, river and the office arrive 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 le damos vuelta okay pero creo que somos cuatro verdad ah. uy no, no veo yo no solo tres Si quieres, demos la vuelta y luego le hacemos. Dos, dos, sería. Dos, she arrived later. Sí. Dos, she arrived later. Das. Das, perdón. Ah, sorry. <laughs> das, she arrived later. Das. <laughs> Yay. Arrived. Simple present. Vaya, según el, pres el simple present. Ay, perdón. Mm -hmm. ah, creo que nos mandaron a la sala otra vez. No, no, bro. No, okay. continue. It's me ah. right here. Just uh, ah, bueno. ah, yeah, sí. no problem. Bueno, bueno. Okay. sí, como te decía, eh, estoy viendo de que simple present es con el sujeto más el verbo, es decir, el soldier eh, y el verb. Entonces, eh, sí, porque va, el, va, ahorita estamos en la primera. Va. Que la primera es sujeto, verbo y el sustantivo. Va. Entonces Ajá. ahí creo que si no me equivoco está diciendo ella. Escribe los reportes y tenemos que elegir si es escribe o escribes. O, o sea, la acción de describir lo que estamos viendo ayer va. Entonces, como si es he de él, she Ajá. de ella y el it, entonces a ese le añadimos una S, según yo entiendo acá. It, Ajá. Ajá. Entonces sería she types reports. Fíjate que es... para mí sí. es... para mí sería sin la S, fíjate. She taped as report. Ella escribe. Ah, sí. Tener razón, perdón. La S se le suma al verbo. Tener razón. Entonces sería eh... she typed reports. O sea, está bien, es sin la S y al verbo se le suma la S. Eh, Yo creo que... Yo creo que en la segunda es types, porque types es el verbo. Uh -huh, por, por, ajá, porque ajá, types es el verbo, ajá. es cierto. Sí, pero, pero, sí, me he confundido. Entonces, vaya, entonces el, el simple present solo se le agrega la S entonces al verbo. El es verbo. Así, ¿verdad? Ajá, tiene razón. Sí, sí tiene razón, tiene razón. Entonces sería tapes. Tapes, sí. Vamos. Sí. No, de acuerdo, de acuerdo. Sí, fíjate que yo. Eh, me confundí de cuaderno y aquí mismo estoy, pero se vinieron aquí y me confundieron todo. 
y no he encontrado el cuaderno de, de la semana pasada, que tenía aquí la semana pasada. Estoy en otro que está, que está en blanco. Pero sí, fíjate que este, si decís que en el simple presente al, al verbo es que se le agrega la S, sería, así sería en el primero. Entonces, cheat page Ajá. reports. Ajá, entonces, uh, cheat page reports. Entonces. Bueno. Vaya, este... Vaya, si querés, resolvemos esto rapidito. Y de ahí, vaya, ya de ahí la, la segunda sería... La segunda sí estoy seguro que sería... Does she a real late? Does she... Ah, porque... Sería con la segunda, con dos. Das, porque uh -huh. siempre cuando es she o he o, o it es con, con dos. Y vale. ya de ahí con los demás es con do. Ajá. Do, you. Vale. Ya la de... tercera es do, she. O sea, eh... tonight, you have your microphone off. Ah, oh, all right, there you are. <ríe> eh, la tercera yo pienso que sería that she arrive early sin la S. Porque en la tercera persona el auxiliar das ya lleva la S. Correcto. Mm. Correct. Does she arrive? Arrive. Arrive. Ella llevaría la S. Oh. Entonces... No, no, letter S, porque you no. have the auxiliary das sí, sí, sí. already. Porque mm -hmm. ella lleva das, por eso. Yes. Por eso la Ah. How was the activity? Was it easy, difficult, or it was okay? Easy. Easy, right? All right, no problem. So now we are going to, to check. Uh, what form of the verb did you select in number one? Sentence number one. She type or types reports? Type or types Type. reports? Types. Types, correct, because it's the, a third person, so we have to conjugate. Porque si no dijera ella escribir, si no le ponemos esa letra S, ¿verdad? Tenemos que decir ella escribe, ¿sí? Conjugando el verbo. Conjugating the verb will be she types reports. Number two, do or does she arrive late? Does. 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 Yes, because it's we are talking about a uh, third person, right? We're talking about Dominique, right? Okay, now let's look at number three. It says, does she arrive or arrives early? Arrive. 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 Uh, in this case, we don't add letter S in number three. Why? Because we have an auxiliary. We have does already. So we don't need to add letter S to the verb. So we are going to add letter S to the verb 
in the affirmative statements, affirmative sentences. But in questions or negative sentences, we don't add letter S to the verb, okay? When we are uh, talking about someone else, right? So let's go and check the, uh, the grammar spot we've got in the manual. In the manual, we have these uh, tables, let's say tables, okay? It's lightning right now <laughs> over here. Like it, oh, yeah. I don't know if you hear, if you heard, no? Did you hear? It was a thunder, Arr. <laughs> very powerful. Okay, here we've got the mm, grammar spot, okay? If you see for the simple present for the third person singular, we are going to use a letter S added, added to the verb. If the verb ends in letter O, we are going to add ES. If it ends in a letter E, we just add letter X. Remember, E can be any man, any male subject. For example, we can say Carlos, we can say, um, we can say, I think that is uh, in the male. Mm, well, actually I can't think about another right now, but if we talk about, oh, okay, we could say, for example, um, my father is he, right? My brother is he, yeah? My cousin could be he, okay? My, grand, my grandpa or my grandfather, okay, it's he. My neighbor, it could be a he or a she, right? So we are not going to get this confused, all right? We, for example, if you talk about me, you are talking about your teacher. Your teacher is a she in this case. It could be a he if it, if it were a male, right? Or a man teaching you. So you will use he or she. And then we have the house, the window, the top, the coffee, it, the dog one thing, one situation, one anything, right? So in those cases, we are going to add S to the, to the verb, to conjugate the verb in the simple present. All right, then when we talk about plural, okay, plural for the third person, remember the first person will be we, the second person, you and plural, and the third person, they, it could be, Things or people, things or people in the third person, it's they, okay? They, look, they. And the form of the verb is the base form, check or like, okay? We don't add, we don't change the verb, just as it is. All right, now we have in the simple present, yes, no questions for the third person singular and plural. So here we are talking about do they, right? Do they, do we, do you, and also do I, all right? Do I too. But when uh, we talk about someone else's activities, then we will say, does he check reports? Does she check reports, okay? So this is the simple present, and we use the simple present for daily activities and schedule events, time tables. The timetables are these kind of boxes or these kind of um, schemes, right? Uh, timetables are where you place the responsible, the activity, and the time that the person does the activity. That's a timetable, a schedule, timetable. Timetable es como el horario que hacen los niños, ¿verdad? De la escuela, ustedes ven ahí, te ponen ahí el, la hora, luego ponen la materia que les toca y si les dejan una tarea está ahí escrito. Y también dice que el responsable, ¿verdad? De revisar eso es la maestra de 
tal materia, ¿sí? Entonces, todo eso va en una timetable, ¿cómo se llama entonces el schedule de un niño? También se llama timetable, ¿ok? Bien. Uh, to continue, we are going to do this exercise in a different way to make it uh, more dynamic, all right? Let's go and let's do this. We are talking about the third person, just as a manner of feedback, all right? As a manner of feedback, we are in this activity. Okay, here we've got this, just a manner to remember. The letter S, it's added to the verbs. Let's look at some vocabulary we learned in the last class. These are some expressions or some activities we usually uh, need in our vocabulary in our workplace. So let's talk about these activities. Let me just to go. Right here. And let's think about she and he. It's going to move just a little bit. Okay, then. If the verb ends in a letter E, we just add letter S, right? Writes letters. Writes letters, right? Who? She or he, right? She or he writes letters she or he checks the email in this case if she checks her email then we are going to use her right her her is the possessive pronoun okay este es un pronombre eh, bueno en este caso es un adjetivo posesivo verdad es posesivo expresa que le pertenece a ella okay es su email Now, he organizes meetings, he schedules appointments, he writes reports, she organizes meetings, she schedules appointments, she writes reports, or a report. Well, algo bien importante que debemos tomar en cuenta, jóvenes, nuestro idioma salvadoreño, nuestro dialecto precioso, tenemos aquella virtud de no pronunciar la letra S al final, ¿verdad? Y se oye bien lindo porque hasta nos dicen que se nos oye cantadito, ¿verdad? Pero lastimosamente vamos a tener que superar eso para poder darnos a entender correctamente en inglés. En inglés tenemos que pronunciar esas letras S del final de las palabras y no vamos a decir right y no vamos a decir la S porque entonces, vuelvo a repetir, estuviéramos diciendo escribir cartas. Ella escribir cartas, ¿verdad? Él eh, que organizar reuniones, o sea, nos vamos a oír de verdad bien primitivos. Así que tenemos que esforzar el cerebro a que mueva nuestra boca o al revés, ¿verdad? Que nuestra boca le enseñe al cerebro que así es, with the letter S, ¿ok? With the letter S. So let's try to pronounce this correctly. Let's pronounce this ones, ¿ok? Let's pronounce balances the accounts. Everybody, please repeat after. Balances the Balance accounts. The accounts. The accounts. Balances the accounts. Balances the accounts. Takes out the garbage. Takes out the garbage. Aquí no importa que se oiga unido como takes out. Mira, takes out. Poco a poco se va a oír más natural. Por el momento exagérelo. Takes out the garbage. Takes out the garbage. Cleans up the sales area. Cleans out the sales area. Sends emails. Sends emails. Very good, very good. So, 
Uh, this was a seminar to remember about the letter S at the end of the verbs in the third person, right? So we were uh, talking about Dominique, remember. Dominique is a secretary, right? Dominique is a secretary. And we want to, um, we want to, um, one second. I will share this in a different way. We want to complete a paragraph of her daily routine, okay? Dominique's daily routine. So let's do this all together. And here we are. <laughs> Okay, we want to see this. We are going to complete this paragraph. This paragraph is about Dominique activities, Dominique's activities, activities. And like a daily routine, right? Let's look at these verbs, call, have, check, work, go three times, wake up, right? Go and wake up. So let's transform these verbs into the third form, okay? In, I'm sorry, in, into the third person form. Call becomes calls, right? Calls. Have becomes has. 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 Mm -hmm. Check. 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 Work. 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 Works. Work. Work. Remember, Work. necesitamos escuchar esa letra S del final. Works. Work. Work. Mm -hmm. Works. Goes. Go. Goes. 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 Uh -huh. Goes. Que se oiga ese shh. No importa que vibre acá. No importa. Necesitamos escucharlo. Goes. 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 Wakes up. Wakes up. Wakes up. Wakes up. Wakes up. Wakes up. Entonces, la primera wake persona up. y los plurales serían call, have, check, work, go, 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 wake up. Y estos verbos los vamos a colocar en este párrafo. Vamos a ver si necesitamos tercera persona, la forma de la tercera persona, o si necesitamos la forma base. Let's do it together. Okay, let's do it together. And let's read. From Monday to Friday, Dominique, mm -hmm, at 5 a.m., she, mm -hmm, to work. And when she gets there, she, mm -hmm, her email and mm -hmm, all the uh, clients in her daily list. Lisa and Claudia, mm -hmm, with Dominique, they mm -hmm, to mm -hmm, lunch together at 4 p.m. Dominique, mm -hmm, home. Okay, let's put all these verbs into this paragraph. Wake up. Uh huh. The number one, the blank wake, number one. Wake, uh huh. Wakes up. Wakes up or wake up? Whoa. Wake, wake up. Wake up. With a letter wake S up. or without the letter S? Yeah. Wake, wake up. Wake up. Que vibre esa S si lleva S. Vamos a ver. Wake up. Wake, wake, wake up. up. Okay, is that correct? All right, let's look at if it is correct. Wait. Oops, sorry. Yes, it wakes up. Dominique, third person. She wakes up at 5 a.m. Now, she... Go. Go or goes? Go. 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 Sorry. She goes to work. She goes. She goes to work. Mm-hmm. Check. 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 Check or checks? 
All right, because it's she, right? Her email. And? Call. Call. Call, call or calls? Call. call. Que suene esa letra S, que vibre acá, a ver. Calls. Calls. Calls, yes. Calls, why calls? Because it's her email and she checks and calls. All right. All the clients in her daily list. Now, Lisa and Claudia. Rose. 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 Work. Oh, someone said something. Huh? Work. 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 Okay. Work. Work. Work or works. Work. 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 <clears throat> uh huh. Have you ever heard this song that say work, 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 work? work. Yeah, that's the correct pronunciation. Work. Okay. Work. Uh huh. Because it's plural, they, right? Lisa and Claudia, they, uh huh, work, okay, work, work. Mm -hmm. with work. Dominique. They have, has, no, has, have. they have, right? They have, right here, okay. They go to have lunch. La actividad completa en este caso es ir a almorzar, okay? Go to have lunch together. Go to have lunch together, all right? Vamos a ver, entonces sería, they go to have lunch together. And then at 4 p.m., Dominique. Go. Go home. Go or goes? Go. With the letter go. E S, right? Mm -hmm. Goes. All right. Very good. So now let's read this. Let's read this aloud. A ver. Uh, please, Fernando Noel, read the paragraph. Okay, teacher. For month, Friday. Dominic wake up, wakes up at 5 o'clock a.m. She goes to work and when she gets there, she checks her email and calls all the cli clients in her daily list. Lisa and Claudia work with Dominic. They go to house lunch together at 4 o'clock p.m. Dominic Gas home. Very good job, Fernando. Thank you very much. Who wants to read it? Stephanie, do you want to read it? Please? Yes. Okay, go ahead. From Monday to Friday, Dominic wakes up at 5 o'clock a.m. She goes to work and then she gets there. She checks uh, her email and calls all the clients in, the, in her daily life. Lisa and Claudia work with Dominic. They go to have lunch together at four o'clock p.m. Dominic goes home. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Now, Marta Alicia, please read the paragraph. Sorry, teacher. Lo leo todo, perdón. <laughs> yes, please. Yes. From Monday to Friday, Dominic wake up at 5 a.m. She goes to work and when she gets there, she checks her email and calls uh, all the clients in her daily list. Lisa and Claudia work 
why Dominic? They go to have lunch together at 4 p.m. Dominic goes home. All right, thank you very much. Just refining the pronunciation. The letter S is in wakes, right? Wakes up, no wake ups. Wakes up, wakes up. And the other was with, with. Aquí no es with, este es with, con. Esto significa con. Entonces, with, with. Así como una I normal. Okay. There you are. And we are going to ask for more. Uh, I mean, we are going to ask two of you more. Okay. Samuel, please read the paragraph. Okay. Mm. Se escucha. Yes. Yes, we do. Thanks. Um, for Monday, to Friday, Dominic wakes up at 5 a.m. She goes to work and when she heads to her, she checks her emails and calls at, excuse me, I take length in her daily list. Lisa and Claudia work with Dominic they go to have lunch together at 4 p.m. Dominic goes home. Very good. Just uh, let's refine some pronunciation. And this is all the clients. All. All. As if you just say a letter O and a letter L, right? All the clients. All the clients. And let's see. She gets there, okay? When she gets there. Samuel, can you repeat this with me, please? When she gets there. When, when she when, gets when she there. Uh -huh. Aquí suena como de gato, gets, okay? Yes. Gets there. Sacamos la yes. lengua, así, yes. the. Como que nos vamos a morder ahí, pero sacamos aire. There. Mm -hmm. yeah. There. All right. Thank you very much, Samuel. And the last one, okay? Who wants to read the paragraph? Okay, Rosa, please go ahead. Okay. From Monday to Friday, Dominique wakes up at 5 a.m. She goes to work and when she gets there, she checks her email and calls all the clients in her daily list. Lisa and Claudia work with Dominic. They go to have lunch together at 4 p.m. Dominic goes home. Very good job, very good job. Just remember that this is not like an El Salvador. It's not Gobierno del Salvador, right? This is goes, no goes, right? This is goes, mm -hmm. goes. Tell me, Fernando. Teacher. Uh, mm -hmm. Voy a intentar decirlo en inglés para que me corrija. All right. I don't understand why, uh, why, don't let her eat in the they go to uh, they go to work uh in case they go to have lunch together mm -hmm. why why don't let her eat oh because this is the third person but in the in the plural in the plural it's not only one person these are two people, right? And in this case, we add uh, Dominique to this group. They, they always take, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, the letter S uh, use um, 
no sé cómo se dice solamente, only. Sí, ¿verdad? So solamente se Ajá. utiliza en un he, he, and it. Exactly. exactly. Uh, this is only, I mean, the letter S and the ES, it's only for he, she, it. Ah, okay. Con, con I, they, we, y all. Con eso no se utiliza. No, or no, ¿verdad? No, no, no. In this case, well, if you say our daughter, we are talking about only one person. Right? Our daughter. Nuestra hija, right? Our daughter. It's only one person. But if I say our dogs, uh, nuestros perros, ahí sí cambia. Are those it? But our daughter sings a song. Okay? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you. All right. There you are. Just give me one second because I'm having... Somebody right here. Yo también tenía una 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 se puede todavía. Okay, I hope everybody is still connected oh yes we have 20 well there are 20 of us connected right here we go something's happening allow me just just one moment guys because they are calling from administration just one second Okay, guys, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I had to uh, do something, but everything is okay. So let's continue with the class. Let's continue. I'm so sorry. Hello, Deborah, and welcome. Okay, it's 9.07. I will take the attendance. So please, everybody, remember to turn your camera on, and when I call your name, please say present. Okay, here we go. Alma... Um, Yamilet Hernández de Vázquez. Present. Okay, Carlos Edgardo Vázquez Espino. Carlos Ernesto Galán Serrano. Débora Yamilet Campos Cortés. Present teacher. Fernando Enrique Martínez Macín. Present teacher. Fernando Noel Mauricio Cíntigo. Present teacher. La Lizette Hernández Cruz. Present teacher. Helen Saraí Hernández Larín. Present. José Adonai Mendoza Aguillón. Present teacher. José Antonio Campos Rivas. Present teacher. Juan Carlos Gavidi Alfaro. Present teacher. María Isabel Rivas Guevara. Marta Alicia Rivera Sosa. Present teacher. Present teacher. Ok, Isabel, ok, Marta Alicia. Eh, Ronaldo Josué Guerrero Hernández. Present. Rosa Estela Polanco García. Present teacher. Samuel Eduardo Araniva Galvez. Present. Saúl Álvarez Pacheco. Thank you, Samuel. <risa> Stephanie Magalia Maya Reyes. Verónica Beatriz Celso de Saldaña. Okay, people, let's continue then because we need to go, we need to get to the negative statements. This is our topic for today, so we want to cover that and we want to practice that. And uh, we were talking about someone else's activities, someone else's activities, remember? Hmm. Hmm.
Okay, then we have a conversation right here. It says on page number 14, page number 14, we're going to change just a little bit. We're going to change just a little bit to how much and how many. And just as a manner of completing the activities in the manual, we are going to complete these activity. We're going to role play the conversation. So please, everybody go to the manual and in the manual, let's practice this conversation. It says, uh in this conversation we we see two people talking about some specific information they are requesting for some specific information we had these um expressions that will be helpful to uh will be helpful to ask about money for example how much do they pay how much do they charge how much how much is it how much do you earn every month how much do you earn monthly so ruth and josh are talking about their vacation remember that yes i mean on friday we were talking about our vacation time remember how many days do you have in your vacation are they paid so this is what we are going to see how to talk about our vacation or our days off these are perks perks okay p e r -K K-S, perks, benefits, ¿ok? Estos son beneficios laborales que nosotros recibimos y normalmente utilizamos el how many y el how much when we talk about money, cuando hablamos acerca de dinero, ¿verdad? Uh, vamos a leer entonces esta eh, conversacioncita. Hey, Josh, I have a question for you. Do you have paid vacations at your job? Yes, I do, Ruth. How about you? Me too. I have paid vacations. How many days do you have in your vacations? 20 days to be exact. How many bonuses do you have per year, Ruth? I have four bonuses. What about you? And how much do you receive? I have just two, but each bonus is for more than $600. I will read it slower, okay? I will read it slower. And you are going to listen to my reading and you will imitate with your microphones off, all right? So, hey, Josh, I have a question for you. Do you have paid vacations at your job? Okay, todos estamos ahí moviendo nuestros labios, imitando lo que dice la teacher, pero con nuestro micrófono apagado, ¿verdad? Okay, vamos a empezar nuevamente. We will uh, go back to the beginning. Hey, Josh, I have a question for you. Do you have paid vacations at your job? Yes, I do, Ruth. How about you? Me too. I have paid vacations. How many days do you have in your vacations? 20 days to be exact. How many bonuses do you have per year, Ruth? I have four bonuses. What about you? And how much do you receive? I have just two but each bonus is for more than $600. Very good bonuses, right? Okay, let's listen now to Ruth and Josh. Ruth will be, let's look at the list over here. Helen, are you there? Are you available, Helen, to participate? Hola, teacher, ¿me escucha bien? Hola. Hello, Helen. Mm -hmm. Hello. You will be Ruth, okay? You will be Ruth. Ruth. Mm -hmm. yeah. And let's look at the list. Fernando Enrique is going to be Josh, okay? Helen, please start. Hey, Josh. I have a question for you. 
do you have pay vacation at you at your home? Job. Job. Yes. Yes, I do, Ruth. How about you? Me too. I have paid vacation. How many days do you have in your vacation? Ten, ten, thirteen days to be exact. How many bunnies, bunnies did you have for your route? I have four bonus. What about you? And how much do you receive? I had used to be both age bonus is for more than six hundred. Six hundred dollars. Dollars. Mm -hmm. $600. $600. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. You did a very good job. Just remember to refine some pronunciations here. For example, when we ask a question, how about you, right? Remember, you have two ways to say this. No emphasis and emphasis. What about you? No emphasis. Now, with emphasis, what about you? Okay, that's emphasis. No emphasis. How about you? Emphasis. How about you? All right. It, it is the same when we ask, for example, what about you? What about you? All right. So let's listen to Carlos Edgardo, please. You will be Josh. And... um. Alma y Amilet, you will be Ruth. Okay. Okay. Hey, Josh, I have a question for you. Do you have pay vacation in your job? Yes, I do, Ruth. How about you? Me too. I have pay vacation. How many days do you have in your vacation? 20 days to be exact. How many bonuses do you have per year, to group? I have four bonuses. What about, what about you? And how much do you receive? I have just two. But each bonus is for more than 600. All right. Very good salary, right? He's got two bonuses. And the bonuses are for more than... Six hundred dollars each. Imagine, oh my goodness, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Okay, now let's circle the word that best complete the questions. Circle the word that best completes the questions. Number one, how much or how many do they pay? How much or how many? Yes, there you are, Carlos Edgardo. So please read the complete question, please. Débora, read number one correctly. Just read the question, read. Read, Deborah. Uh huh. How much money do you they pay? Se oye bastante bien. Hey, se fijaron cómo salió esto. Hey, qué chévere que salió esto. Miren, así como lo dijo Débora, sonó como que yo estoy preguntando esto. Miren, así. Yo soy así como lo dijo Débora. ok? How much Money, okay, do they pay? See, <laughs> how much money do they pay? That's what she said, right? 
pero no dice eso esta pregunta, ¿verdad? Ella, no. En la pronunciación que lo dijo lo hubiéramos entendido correcto. Sin embargo, solo podemos decirlo según esta expresión que estamos aprendiendo como how much do they pay. Cuando decimos how much en esta pregunta, do they pay, ya sabemos que estamos refiriéndonos a dinero, entonces no necesitamos la palabra, ¿verdad? ¿Ok? How much do they pay? How much do they pay? Digámoslo, Débora. How much do they pay? How much do you they pay? Do they pay? Do you? Do you? Do no. You. Do they. Mire. Do they. Ajá. ¿Y esto qué significa, jóvenes? ¿Alguien recuerda qué significa? Pero díganmelo en salvadoreño. Una pregunta. Ajá. Pero en salvadoreño, digámoslo. ¿Y cuánto pagan vos? Ajá. Exacto. Eso significa. Okay. ¿Y cuánto pagan vos? How much do they pay? Okay, how much do they pay? Vamos number two. Let's look at number two. How much or how many days do you have in your vacation? Much or many? Exactly, Al Alma, because we can count the days. One day, two days, three days, right? So, uh, please, um, Jose Antonio, read the question number two. Are you there, Jose Antonio? Okay, then, uh, Samuel, please read the sentence, I mean, the question number two. How much do I pay? Okay, uh, no, okay, I'm sorry. Estamos en este lado de aquí abajo, donde hemos hecho el círculo, ¿verdad? Donde ah, hemos sí, hecho el círculo, sí. ajá. Eh, casi no veo la parte de abajo. Ah, ok. Voy a bajar un poquito más. No, no. Ah, ya lo vi. Eh, espérame, que se casi. Ahí. How much? How much? Ah, ya. Yeah. How many guys do you have in your vacation? Correct. How many days? Very good. Very good. Is there any question so far? about how much and how many when we talk about money and when we talk about the days? Questions? No questions. Teacher. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have a question. Uh, entonces no va a ser necesario mencionar el money. Uh, exactly. Para... Estamos dirigiéndonos a una pregunta así como, how much, how much? Uh -huh, uh -huh. No necesita decir money. You don't need to say money to understand that when you say, cua, pero cuando usted usa los verbos como pay, buy, charge, ¿verdad? Son verbos relacionados a una actividad en donde va envuelta el dinero, ¿verdad? Earn, por ejemplo. Uh, por ahí les voy a pasar una lista de verbos que están relacionados con el dinero. Ya lo vamos a ver más adelantito. Ok, cuando va esa pregunta, how much, con cualquiera de esos verbos o de esas acciones, ah, quiere decir que entonces estamos hablando de dinero y no necesitamos decir money. Ok, bien, vamos a ver en esta actividad, dice, use one of the questions above to complete the mini conversations. Remember the questions? How much do they charge? How much is it? How much do you earn? So let's look at the answers. It is $10.50. Ah, este es un precio, ¿verdad? It's a price. ¿Qué pregunta de las de arriba utilizaríamos? A ver, ¿qué pregunta de esta tablita utilizaríamos? Perdón. Sí, sería, how much is it? Exactly. How much is it? All right. How much is it? Okay, now let's look at number two. I make $545 monthly. 
Este make es hago, pero hago de ganar, ¿verdad? Trabajando hago este dinero. Entonces, ¿cuál de las preguntas anteriores sería para esta respuesta? How much do you early every month? Monthly. Very good. Ajá. Every monthly. Exactly. Ajá. En este caso usamos every month, que significa exactamente igual si dijéramos solo monthly. ¿Cuál quieren usar? Every month or monthly? Monthly. Monthly. Vaya, entonces vamos a poner. How much do you earn monthly? ¿Por qué no importa? Per ¿Perdón? ¿Por qué no importa usar cualquiera de las dos? ¿Por qué es en correcto el... usar cualquiera de las dos? Exactamente. Es, ex es el mismo significado que digamos todos los meses o cada mes, como decir oh, mensualmente. ¿Ok? Es lo, mismo. Es, lo mismo de, es lo mismo decir que gana en un mes o que gana en varios meses. No, no, no. En este caso, monthly es mensualmente. Oh. ¿sí? Y every month es cada mes. So, oh. Es exactamente sí, el lo, mismo lo, lo significado. Mismo. Ya, ya uh -huh. que se exactly. Ambos se refieren a... Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. How much do you earn? Y dijimos monthly, ¿verdad? Porque nos gusta más decirlo así. Monthly. Y es una expresión de tiempo. Sí, es un adverbio en este caso. ¿Sí? ¿Por qué? Porque está afectando el verbo. En este caso, el verbo es earn. How much do you earn monthly? ¿Ok? Monthly. Y no se nos olvide el question mark. Number three. Veamos la respuesta, dice, they take $23 per item. They take $23 per item. Mm. Estamos hablando que nos están cobrando algo, ¿verdad? Sí, nos cobran algo. Uh -huh. Very good, very good. How much do they charge? And the question mark. Very good. What about the number four? The company pays $690 with bonuses. How much do you pay? Do they? Do they pay? Do they pay? Yes. Uh -huh. How much do they pay? Uh -huh. Y ustedes en una entrevista de trabajo por... Decir algo, ustedes preguntan, hey, miren, ¿y cuánto voy a ganar? Usted pregunta eso. A ver, comentemos. Claro que sí. Yes. Ajá. ¿Y cómo lo pregunta? A ver, así una manera polite de decirlo en español. A ver. ¿Cuánto pagan? Y de una vez, con patada al pecho, le dice usted, mire usted, ¿y cuánto pagan aquí? ¿Sí o no? Yes. <risa> Mire, disculpe, un es... salario. No es lo que quería, ah. pero ni modo. <risa> <risa> ok, ajá. Pero alguien dijo una frase muy buena en español. A ver, ¿cómo fue del salario? Eh, yo pregunté si cuál sería mi salario. Ah, ok. Disculpe, ¿y cuánto para sería mi salario? Muy... Ajá, ah, para que era muy... Fuerte, sí, directo. Ajá, muy pesada la pregunta. Ok, ajá, ajá. Pues en inglés usted sí puede preguntar directamente, pero también hay algunas formas eh, muy polite de expresarlo. Lo vamos a ver en la uh, unidad número 4, donde ustedes van a ver que se puede decir de una manera más eh, suave, ¿verdad? Más eh, polite, educada, ¿sí? ¿Cuánto tiempo también se puede decir? Ah, ok. How much do they pay? Ajá. En vez de decirle, do you pay, ¿verdad? No, do they pay. Not you, but they pay. Mm -hmm. Sí, that's correct. All right, people. Very good. Uh, question. Mm -hmm. eh, Estaba viendo lo que es la... The question... Eh, eh, so, so. Uh, two. The question two. Number two. Uh, uh -huh. 
Yes, it's easy. How much do you early earn? Here, every month. Mom. Ajá. Uh -huh. Pero acá un solo en la pregunta, la respuesta que pusimos, solamente es how much do you earn mom. No pusimos el every. Ah, porque aquí puede ser o every month o monthly, no los dos. Tiene que ser este o este. Puede usar no, uno es, a la vez. Hablo de earn every. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Ese, eh, ajá, ese vale. Es que la frase completa, Débora, ah. es every month. La frase completa ajá. es every month. Y la otra frase o, o eh, la expresión de tiempo completa es monthly. Entonces, yo, de, yo debo decir, how much do you earn every month? Y ahí termino de una manera. O la otra forma puede ser, how much do you earn monthly? Uh -huh. ¿Es esto o es esto? Pero no pueden ser los dos juntos. ¿Ok? Ajá. Este, si lo decimos los dos juntos, es como que estuviéramos diciendo un respeto respetuoso, ¿vea? Entonces, no podemos decir así. Tenemos que decir, aquí en este caso es... Todos los meses mensualmente no se puede decir. Tenemos que decir o todos los meses, cada mes o, o mensualmente. Pero no podemos decirlo todo junto, ¿verdad? Ese sería como decir más, pero sin embargo, vea, no. No lo decimos juntos. ¿Ok? Thank you, thank you. Very well. Uh -huh. Is there any other question about the expressions to talk about money? No questions. Okay, then it's your turn, guys. This is your turn now. So, um, voy a decir dos nombres. El primero que digo lee la pregunta y el segundo que digo dice la respuesta de esa pregunta, ¿ok? Y eh, cuando llegue yo al número cuatro, voy a seguir diciendo y regresan al número uno, ¿sí? Vamos a ver entonces. Rosa and Samuel. How much it is? Is it? Is it? Is it? Uh, it is? It, it is uh, 10 dólares. Siempre separamos el $10. precio. Primero decimos los dólares y después los centavos. Entonces, 10 dólares, 50 cents. 50 cents. All right. Ahora dígalo completo otra vez, Samuel. It is ten dollars and fifty cents. Very good, Samuel. Now, vamos. Number two, Débora and Gabriela. And you, yo sería la pregunta. Okay. How much do you earn monthly? I might. I make uh, by hundred, hundred, forty-five dollar monthly. Yes. Now, Fernando Noel and Fernando Enrique. How much do they charge? They, they. Um, es este? They take they take dollars twenty three twenty three twenty three twenty three dollars dollar fifteen per item item yes they take okay. twenty three dollars per item a ver otra vez Fernando they take $20 per item. Item, item. Ajá. No tenga miedo. Usted mire, abra la boca y no se preocupe. Si se equivocó, no importa, usted sigue, ¿ok? No, nadie le va a decir, uy, no, qué chistoso. No, no, no. Aquí vamos y usted abre la boca lo más que pueda, ¿sí? Bien, vamos a escuchar ahora. We want to listen to... José Adonai en Marta Alicia. Mm. 
How much do they pay? Sí. How do you say 690 in English? 690 dollars. Okay. Uh, the company pay 600. ¿Cómo? 90. 90, 90 dollars. dollars with bonus. Bonuses. Bonuses. Yes, thank you very much, Marta Alicia. <laughs> All right, now let's listen to Juan Carlos and Jose Antonio. Number one. Dale, Juan Carlos. How much is it? It is $10.50. Fifty cents. Very good. Now, Stephanie and Isabel. How much do you earn monthly? Yes. Five hundred forty-five dollars. Five hundred forty-five dollars. Very good, very good. So now, guys, we are going to continue. Um, we have to talk about the negative expressions, negative statements. So as a manner of of practice, we know how this works, but let's try to practice this, okay? Let's try to practice this. Allow me just to get right here to the negative forms, okay? I will send you a link, yeah? In this link, you are going to find a worksheet. This worksheet is online. So you will complete, you complete, don't or doesn't according to the pronoun, okay? Doesn't for the third person and do for I, you, we, and they, all right? So let's try to do this exercise together. Are you there yet? Ya llegaron ahí? Are you there yet? Bye. Recordemos, I doesn't or don't like pizza. Doesn't. Para I, es doesn't o es don't? I don't. Exactly. I don't like pizza. Todos los dislikes y likes que nosotros tenemos es con do and don't, ¿verdad? Entonces, I don't like pizza. You? Don't. Don't. A ver, ahora díganme completa la oración. You? Don't like pizza. Like You don't like meat. All right. You don't like meat. Que se oiga completa la oración. Vamos. Next one. He doesn't. Completa la oración. He doesn't like sugar. He doesn't like sugar. He doesn't like sugar. Next. She don't, she don't like fruit. Don't like fruit. She doesn't like fruit, right? She doesn't like fruit. Mm -hmm. Eat. It doesn't like, uh, like bacon. 
Very good. Next one. We don't want like eggs. Like eggs. You don't like pasta. You don't. You don't. You don't like pasta. Mm -hmm. They don't. You don't like pasta. Like Correct. Uh huh. They. They don't like. Don't they don't, don't like, like fish. fish. They don't like fish. Correct. So now let's click on check, and screenshot and send it to the WhatsApp, please. Hmm? With your 100%. Thank you, Carlos. Okay, now let's complete this exercise. Oh, just one second because this is. Teacher. Tell me. Lo hice, pero creo que, pues, como se me traba el teléfono y le dio OK, ya no me sale la nota por tomar el speech. Ah, okay, well. Uh, you can complete it later and then you send it to me, all right? You upload it to the, I mean, you share it to, uh, to the WhatsApp later. Okay, Deborah? Only yours, okay? Now I have some of you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. There you are. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's go to do this exercise this is like a quiz but we're going just to exercise all right we're just to exercise affirmative and negative so remember third person and the plurals and the negative forms okay yes, All right, here we are. And let's complete. Let's have just a little fun. Andy, mm -hmm. wash, washes, or just wash? Washes. Washes. Uh-huh, can you spell that? How do you spell it? Letter A, letter B, or letter C? W, H, I'm sorry, W-A-S-H-E-S, -S, right? Bye. Así vamos a ir diciendo las respuestas. Más dinámico, vamos. Ajá, Andy, mm -hmm, the family car every Saturday. Andy. He watching the family car every Saturday. Very good. Washes, washes. Mm -hmm. Letter B, right? Okay, yes, there you are. So now let's go to the next one. Every morning, my mother... Mm -hmm. Get up, gets up, or gets up. Letter C, letter B, letter A. Letter C. Letter C. Okay, there you are. Next one. It says, Mr. Black. Mm -hmm. Emails in the evenings, right? Writs or writs. Right. Right. Letter C. Letter C. Right. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Next one. The girls, plural, mm -hmm, the shopping twice a week. Does, do, or does? Girls, plural? Letter B. Letter B. Uh, who says letter A? Uh, 
Raise your hand. Letter A. A. Or letter B. Letter A. Or letter B. Okay, vamos a ver. Ajá. A. Si es plural, if it is plural, ajá. ¿Qué forma usamos? ¿Usamos does o usamos do? Do. do. Ok, vamos a hacer una cosa. Yo le voy a prestar el remoto. A ver, les voy a prestar el remoto. A Doña Rosa Estela, ¿ok? A Mrs. Rosa Estela. ¿Got it? A ver, Rosa Estela, me puso das. Ajá. Ok, no era das, ¿verdad? Bien, vamos a la siguiente. <coughs> Ayudémosle todos. Todos estamos jugando, vamos. Mandy and Susan son dos personas, ¿verdad? Como allá vimos a Lisa y Claudia, ¿se acuerdan en la, en el, la historia de Dominic? Era plural, don't watch. Ajá. Vamos a ver la otra. John. John. Let Let it see. Uh -huh. My parents. My parents. That's no lie. My parents. No. Two people. No, 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 no. Two. No, no, no. Live. Uh huh. Letter B. Letter B. Letter B. Yay! Bravo! Oh, Yay! Don't like. <laughs> Carlos? Don't like. Don't like. No problem. Okay, let's do it again. Let's do it again. Start again. Uh huh. Let's start this again. So let's do it together. Vamos a ver. Ahora le vamos a prestar el control a. A ver, a ver. Le vamos a prestar el control a Alma. Okay. There you are, Alma. Vamos, todos, todos, haciéndolo. Everybody. Ajá, washes. Pero digámosla toda la oración. Hey, hey. Every morning, my father. At six o'clock. Get up. At six o'clock. Get up. Mr. Black, Don't watch. Uh huh. John, open, Letter C, right? P L A Y S. There you are. My don't leave. Don't leave. Don't leave. Carlos like pizza. All right. Uh huh. Doesn't. Very good. Very good. So eight of eight. Great. We got it, guys. We got it. So thank you very much for participating, guys. So now we know that in affirmative way, in the affirmative sentences, uh huh, are just the verbs, right? Con I mean uh 
for I, you, we, and they, it's the um, base form of the verb. Negative, don't, doesn't, and the base form of the verb. And for questions, we're going to use do, does, in the uh, base form of the verb. All right, so let's continue, guys. In our manuals, in our manuals, we have a reading, okay? Yo les voy a poner un audio y ustedes van a escuchar de qué se trata. Esto se trata acerca de una carta de bienvenida para Dominique en su nuevo trabajo. ¿Ok? Entonces, ustedes van a ver qué es lo que le están informando. What they are informing a uh, Dominique, ¿verdad? ¿Qué le están informando a Dominique en esa carta? ¿Qué le dicen? Eso es lo que vamos a ver ahorita, ¿sí? Así que todos, por favor, abriendo bien el oído, vamos a escuchar. Travers Incorporated, for a better future, dear employee, welcome to Travers Incorporated. Congratulations, you are now part of the Travers family. Here's some information about your new job. Please, read it carefully. Name, Glenda Dominique Sanchez. Job title, Junior Sales Manager. Key job duties, have a meeting with your manager every week. Get in contact with customers. Answer clients' questions about our products. Take orders on the telephone. Yeah. Call potential clients. Vacations. Two weeks per year plus public holidays. Salary. $440,000 per month plus bonus. Good luck. Mark Travers, CFO. All right, what was this letter about? What is the information in this letter? It's about the new job. New job, yes. Uh huh. And what information contains this letter? The salary, uh huh. What else? Four hundred dollars. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what else did you hear? The vacations. Vacation periods, right? The vacation periods. All right. Now let's listen to the uh, welcoming letter again, and. Please pay attention to the intonation when you read aloud, okay? Cuando usted lee en voz alta, escuchemos la entonación, okay? To give meaning, para dar significado a lo que hemos escrito, to what you wrote about, okay? There it goes. Travers Incorporated, for a better future, dear employee, welcome to Travers Incorporated. Congratulations, you are now part of the Travers family. Here's some information about your new job. Please, read it carefully. Name, Glenda Dominique Sanchez. Job title, Junior Sales Manager. Key job duties, have a meeting with your manager every week. Get in contact with customers. Answer clients' questions about our products. Take orders on the telephone. Call potential clients. Vacations. 
two weeks per year plus public holidays. Salary, $440,000 per month plus bonus. Good luck, Mark Travers, CFO. Okay, now, now it's clearer, right? Ahora está un poquito más claro, ¿sí? Ya está un poquito más claro. Vamos a ir y leerlo, ¿ok? Lo vamos a leer. Por ahí tenemos eh, la cartita, está en la página on page number 15. On page number 15, ¿ok? Ahí tenemos la cartita de bienvenida. So here we go. Let's read it together and let's listen. So let's read along. Read along. Read along significa que usted escucha el audio y va leyendo con la vista, right? Read along. This is a welcoming letter, so let's play this out. Travers Incorporated, for a better future, dear employee, welcome to Travers Incorporated. Congratulations, you are now part of the Travers family. Here's some information about your new job. Please, read it carefully. Name, Glenda Dominique Sanchez. Job title, Junior Sales Manager. Key job duties, have a meeting with your manager every week. Get in contact with customers. Answer clients' questions about our products. Take orders on the telephone. Call potential clients. Vacations. Two weeks per year plus public holidays. Salary. $440,000 per month plus bonus. Good luck. Mark Travers, CFO. All right. Now, I will play the audio again, and please notice a mistake, all right? A mistake. There is one mistake. Travers Incorporated, for a better future, dear employee, welcome to Travers Incorporated. Congratulations, you are now part of the Travers family. Here's some information about your new job. Please, read it carefully. Name, Glenda Dominique Sanchez. Job title, Junior Sales Manager. Key job duties, have a meeting with your manager every week. Get in contact with customers. Answer clients' questions about our products. Take orders on the telephone. Call potential clients. Vacations, two weeks per year plus public holidays. Salary. $440,000 per month plus bonus. Good luck, Mark Travers, CFO. All right, did you find out what the mistake is? No? Okay, now let's talk about what are the responsibilities of Dominique in her new job. What are her responsibilities? Uh, meeting with your manager every week, getting in contact with customers, answering uh, clients' questions about the products, uh, take hot order, orders on the telephone for potential clients. Okay, does she have paid vacations? Two weeks per year. Yes, she does. Okay, yes, she does. Yes, mm -hmm. she, she has two weeks yes, she has two week per year plus public anyway. holidays right public plus holidays. the public holidays public holidays son todos los asuetos okay public holidays son los asuetos now what about the salary how much 
that she does she earn monthly? She earns four hundred dollars per month plus one. Okay, four hundred forty dollars, right? Four hundred forty dollars per month plus the bonus plus the bonus and it's only one bonus maybe it, it is because she speaks english okay maybe she's got a bonus because she speaks english maybe we don't know if she speaks french or that is why she's getting a bonus or um, because a secretary usually don't have bonuses right but here it says junior sales manager oh so it's per sales right per sales Per goals, por metas, yeah? So, we can get bonus for different reasons, different reasons, okay? Are we okay so far? Is there any question at the moment? Is there any question? Tell me. ¿Por qué usa la palabra per? Ah, pair es como eh, un sinónimo de decir eh, for or by, ok, by. Hay diferentes formas de decir por y en este caso per month es como decir al mes, ok, al mes. Uh -huh. Eso solo en cantidades de dinero o... No, también se ocupa en otras, en otros ámbitos. Pero sí, cuando hablamos de dinero, podemos decirlo de esa manera o en tiempo, ¿verdad? Tiempo fiscal, digamos, o tiempo contable, ¿verdad? El mes, cuando hace el cierre, es per month, ¿ok? Uh -huh. Ok, yeah. ok. Okay, people, uh, if you don't have any more questions, Débora, ahora le toca a usted quedarse. Oye, se va a quedar, ¿verdad? Ya eh, tenemos todos... Sí, ah, perdón, Débora. Sí, sorry. si gusta, me lo puede cambiar con alguien para mañana. Es que... Ah, ok, vamos a ver, jóvenes. <ríe> a ver quién quiere cambiar con Débora. Vamos a ver quién quiere cambiar con Débora el día de hoy. Solo uno, por favor, se traba el Zoom, se traba. No, no, no se amontonen. <ríe> No, todo así ya. <risa> bueno, les doy el chance mientras tomo la, la asistencia, ¿ok? Les doy el chance mientras tomo la asistencia para ver quién quiera quedarse. No, yo sé que todos quieren quedarse, yo lo sé, pero sí, solo es para uno, así que lo siento, ¿verdad? Pero vamos a rechazar a todos los que no, no, no se anote. A ver, vamos a ver el primero. A moment. Alma Yamilet Hernández de Vázquez. Present. Carlos Edgardo Vázquez Espino. Present teacher. Carlos Ernesto Galán Serrano. Present teacher. Débora Yamilet Campos Cortés. Present teacher. Fernando Enrique Martínez Macín. Fernando Noel Mauricio Cintigo. Ok. Present teacher. Ok. Gabriela Liceta Hernández Cruz. Sí. Helen Saraí Hernández Larín. Sí. José Adonai Mendoza Aguillón. Present teacher. José Antonio Campos Rivas. Present teacher. Juan Carlos Gavidia Alfaro. Present teacher. María Isabel Rivas Guevara. Present teacher. Marta Alicia Rivera Sosa. Present teacher. Ronaldo José Guerrero Hernández. Rosa Estela Polanco García. Present teacher. Samuel Eduardo Araniva Galvez. Saúl Álvarez Pacheco. Stephanie Magalia Maya Reyes. Present teacher. Verónica Beatriz Elso de Saldaña. Present teacher. Ok, there you are. Thank you. Ok, people, then, uh, who wants to stay? Y hoy que ya tenía listos los tamales pisques. Ahí me dejaron con los tamales pisques el día de hoy. Bueno, ni modo. Comeré yo solita tamales pisques. Bueno, chicos.
De verdad, nadie se quiere quedar. Mañana podría quedarme igual. Eh, es que hoy... No, tendría que esperar a que alguien no pueda en su tiempo, porque mañana le tocaría a, vamos a ver, vamos a ver, le tocaría a Fernando Enrique. Verá, si Fernando Enrique se quisiera quedar hoy, Fernando Enrique, ¿está usted por ahí todavía? Sí, está buena. Ay, entonces sí tuvo suerte de hora. Muy bien, muy bien, vale, vale mucho insistir. Muy bien. Ok, have a very good night. Please do and submit your homework. See you tomorrow. Have a very good night. Tell me, tell me, Deborah. Con lo de la plataforma, nada más quería saber si ya alguno de los compañeros... No le han llamado. No. Es que ya la mayoría ya estuvo, ¿verdad? Ya todos... ¿Tampoco usted, Carlos? Yo todavía no. todavía no, tampoco. Padre santo, no, entonces hagamos el reporte en este mero, en este mero momento, otra vez, sí, a ver. Compañero, no. yo le yo escribí a la de soporte eh, personal y ella me resolvió un rápido problema. Sí, eso es lo mejor, por eso ella ponía ahí que por favor se comunicaran en chat directo. Está en el, en... Sí, escriban porque igual yo también escribí y en el momento me lo activó. Ah, pues entonces Pero... eso... Yo le escribí, ¿en qué les puedo ayudar? Ya no me dijeron nada más. ¿Usted le escribió a quién, Fernando? A ver, le vamos a pasar aquí el... el chat de privado. A ver, sería con... Fernando, pero ya revisó el correo. Puede ser de que lo, lo hayan activado y tal vez le ha caído como spam también. No, de hecho, bien curioso porque en el correo sí me aparece que ya estoy registrado en el módulo 2. Quiero ingresar en la plataforma, no puedo ver nada del módulo 2, solamente me aparece el módulo 1. Solo el 1 le está apareciendo. Así es. En mi caso, ninguno, porque como primer módulo que estoy. Yo okay. me comuniqué con ellos y no tuve la llamada así. Me metí para irle diciendo y ya puedo resolver un problema. Vale, les voy a poner acá, ajá. Aquí es lo que, lo que me aparece al ingresar a la plataforma, ese último mensaje que envié. Sí, y yo la vez pasada también me lo envió, ¿verdad? Y yo lo ajá. envié también. Vale, entonces ahorita pongámosle aquí a Rebeca, Rebeca Flores, ajá. Vale, pongamos los nombres, eh, necesitamos... Se nos active el módulo 2. Ya todos están en grupo porque yo no estoy en un grupo, solamente me notificaron a un, a un chat, en un chat. No está aquí en, en el grupo de, de WhatsApp, Débora. Por eso le he escrito en privado a usted porque yo, o sea, la... Solo tengo uno donde me dijeron que iba a iniciar las clases el, el miércoles y este, de que después nos informaron de que supuestamente se había movido. Ah, que íbamos a empezar lunes, pero después me avisaron que se había movido la fecha. Que el único chat que tengo ahorita, porque me lo otro grupo, como se disolvió, y aparece como Rebeca Flores, nada más, que me mandó un mensaje. Ok, va. Entonces, Débora Campos, Fernando eh, Cíntigo, ¿quién, ¿quién más? Perdónenme. Carlos Vázquez. Carlos Vázquez. Ajá, ¿quién Carlos más? Galán. Carlos Galán. Ajá. ¿Alguien más? Vale. Ahí ya lo enviamos dentro de nuestro mismo eh, chat, ¿ok? Yo lo he enviado privado, lo he enviado a administración a diferentes lugares y ahorita pues ya se lo enviamos a Rebeca, que es la que se puso a, las, a nuestras órdenes, ¿verdad? Esperemos que en el transcurso del día de mañana ya podamos tener todo listo, porque sí, ya mañana tenemos que tener subida la unidad 1. Ahorita, en todo caso, ¿siempre se quiere quedar eh, Fernando? ¿Sí? Sí, sí, sí. 
Va. Entonces, have a very good night, everybody, and see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. All right. Bye bye. Good night, teacher. See you tomorrow. Okay. Good night. Mm -hmm. See you. Good night, teacher. Have a very good night, Deborah. No escuchaba okay. nada, lo siento. All right, no problem. Bye bye. Bueno, see you, teacher. See you. Okay, Fernando, here we are. Is there any question I can help you with? Um, with the question. Um, Más que cuestión, este, ¿cómo se llama? Sería como que pues, prácticamente darle seguimiento a lo que ya más o menos ya, ya lo hablamos la vez pasada. Uh -huh. Y no simplemente dedicarle un poquito más de tiempo de mi parte y, y aprender los verbos. Sí, le digo que, que con el primer módulo pues no, no dejé de aprender. Sí me gustó y aprendí un poquito mejor. Como le dije, va, me gustó la metodología que aprendí un poquito más que en los cursos anteriores. Y sí, la verdad siento que, que prácticamente solo para, me falta un poquito más de, de agarrar un poquito más de tiempo. Ok. Mire, en, en manera de consejo de lo que yo he observado en cuanto a, a la hora de su participación, eh, usted conoce porque comprende las órdenes, digamos, las instrucciones, usted las comprende. Entonces, en este caso, lo que a usted le, le está afectando, tal vez es ponerse nervioso, ¿verdad? Tal vez es eso, ponerse nervioso y eh, dos cositas, mire. Una, que hay que abrir bien la boca. Para poder hablar el, el inglés, hay que abrir la boca. Y este no se preocupe usted por algún error o, o alguna eh, mala pronunciación, usted dígalo. Cuando a veces no conocemos una palabra, nos detenemos. Eso es lo que hay que ir evitando. Eso es lo que hay que ir evitando y decirla tal como lo está leyendo, porque leer sí sabe normal en español. Entonces, eh, uno cree que, que lo va a decir mal, no importa. Hay que leerlo como está ahí, ¿verdad? Hay que leerlo y de alguna manera se va a comprender en el contexto y siga con la otra que sí ya la conoce. Ahora, mire, eh, yo le iba, le iba a hacer notar algo. ¿vale? Por ejemplo, cuando nosotros leemos, a ver, le voy a poner por acá algo de la ley. Ah, vaya, la carta. La carta que estábamos leyendo ahorita, sí. Uh -huh. En esta cartita usted va a ver que eh, todavía no la hemos leído juntos, ¿verdad?, pero ahorita sí. usted podría leerla y quiero que llegue hasta el punto o hasta el signo de exclamación o de interrogación con el mismo aire con que empieza cada idea para que no se pierda la continuidad y empiece como a fluir un poquito más. A ver, ahorita se lo pongo acá. Aquí la tenemos la cartita. Entonces, vamos a leer acá, mira. Vale, leamos desde acá y vamos leyendo hasta donde encontremos signo de puntuación. ¿sí? Si no hay signo de puntuación, sigo, 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 sigo sin detenerme. ¿Ok? Vamos okay. a ver. Démosle, pues. You, you may start. Ok. Traven things. A beard, future did employee will come to travel things. Con congratulations, you are not part of the travel family. Here's her some information about you, about a new, new uh, youth. Job. Job. Please read it. Carefully. Nay, 
Glenda Nominic Sánchez, Yad Tilly Junior Sales Manager, que Yad Duri had a meeting with you manager every week. Get in contact with customers. Answer clients' questions about our product. Take orders on the telephone. Call potential clients. Vacation to which peer year? Holy holiday. Salary. For ten dollars for forty. No, en este uh, caso es four hundred porque son cuatrocientos, va. Four hundred. Hundred. Forty. Hundred forty. Uh -huh. Y decimos dólares porque está entero, ¿verdad? No tenemos centavos. Entonces four hundred forty dollars. ¿Cómo sería? Forty hundred. No, no. Four, four. Four. Uh -huh. four hundred. Four hundred. Forty. Forty. Dollars. Dollars. Uh -huh. Porque en español decimos, mire, cuatrocientos, cuatrocientos cuarenta. Es in, en inglés va a sonar igual. Four hundred cuatrocientos. Y luego, 40, 40. ¿Ok? Va, dele usted. Okay, okay. Ajá, Sería salary. Salary. 40, 100. 400, ajá. 400, 40, dólar. Así. Yes. Fair, uh -huh. fair, es que es fair. Yes. Per month, bonus. Uh -huh. Good look, Mac Travel. CF, ¿cómo es este? CFO. CFO. Uh -huh. Este oh. es el executive, este es el financiero, ¿verdad? este es el uh -huh. eh, manda más ¿verdad? de el dinero del pistillo. <risa> Bien, vaya, mire, las observaciones que yo le puedo hacer es que eh, si tiene que regresar a escuchar nuevamente los sonidos de las letras y en los sonidos de las letras usted va a encontrar que hay, por ejemplo, la forma de dividir las palabras en sílabas, ¿verdad? En inglés es un poquito diferente que en español. Nosotros si no lleva una vocal, no la separamos. O sea, si, si lleva dos consonantes juntas, no puede ir en una sola, ¿verdad? Sino que tiene que llevar consonante, vocal, consonante, vocal, consonante. Y si lleva dos vocales, pues sí, en español. Ahora, mm. en inglés es un poquito diferente. Pero esa parte tal vez le hace falta a usted para poder comprender la lectura, para por lo menos pronunciar lo que está leyendo. Uh -huh. Yo quisiera hacerle la pregunta. Cuando usted lee inglés sin decirlo eh, audiblemente, ¿usted entiende lo que lee? ¿Cómo en qué, en qué porcentaje cree usted que entendería esto si no lo dice, sino que solo lo lee con la vista? Ah, yo calculo que es un 75, de 70 a 75 por ciento. Sin pronunciarlo, o sea, ¿verdad? Ah, o sea, lo que pasa es que yo entenderlo, o sea, sí entiendo los, lo que dice, ¿verdad? Ajá. Pero la, cómo pronunciarlo realmente es lo que me cuesta. Okay. Entonces, porque como, bueno, en la parte informática nosotros aprendemos solo el inglés técnico. ¿Qué es lo básico? Que prácticamente... Puro leer el manual, digamos. Ajá, pues en el manual entendemos, agarramos una palabra y la otra, la unimos y sabemos que más o menos qué dice. 
Ajá. Pero pronunciarla es mentira. Ya. Yeah. O sea, es lo que más nos cuesta. Exacto. Entonces, sí, definitivamente hay que recordar los sonidos de las letras. Para eso es de volver a cantar la cancioncita y, y, y créame que esa cancioncita es sumamente útil y no hay que aburrirse hasta que uno se la aprenda de memoria. Dice que cuando uno está aprendiendo algo, por ejemplo, qué sé yo, cuando usted aprendió el, a, a, a digitar en el teclado, por ejemplo, tuvo que practicarlo una y otra vez para saber por dónde iba cada tecla, qué dedo va en cada tecla y todo eso. Entonces es lo mismo con el idioma. Por ejemplo, para la música, ¿verdad? se tiene que aprender uno las notas, después tiene que aprender a, a ver las, los valores de las notas, de las figuras. Uh -huh. Hay diferentes elementos que uno tiene que unir para llegar a lograr el objetivo. Entonces, en inglés, lo que se necesita para poder hablar es pronunciar. Y para pronunciar, yo necesito conocer el sonido. Y para conocer el sonido, tengo que escucharlo. No me queda de otra. Tengo que escucharlo, que alguien me haga ese sonido para yo imitarlo. Entonces, la cancioncita de siempre, esa le va a servir muchísimo, pero tiene que aprendérsela como que fuera el Padre Nuestro, ¿me entiende? Uh -huh. <risa> para sí, que cuando usted, oh. ajá, para que cuando usted ya esté leyendo, ubique el sonido de las letras, ¿verdad? Ya relacione la letra con el sonido. Y así ya lo pueda pronunciar mejor, ¿verdad? No, Por... que, perdón, este, dígame, dígame. Yo creo que a veces me pasa que de repente, bueno, en su caso usted está hablando, pero cuando habla, eh, ahí voy como que queriendo agarrar de dónde, para qué, cómo tratar de entenderle, va. Ajá. Como claramente la fluidez suya. Chica, perfecta, va. Ay, no, 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 sea, no uno, falta, falta. Uno agarra, uno agarra las palabras y más o menos va viendo por dónde. Sí. Pero, pero sí, la verdad, sí, o sea, la parte de lectura y escritura, de, de saberla, como dice, ¿verdad? Ajá. Algunos sí le digo realmente si quedo como uno dudando qué dice, pero Ajá. mi porcentaje consiento que es el Ese es el detalle, que hay que ir por partes, hay que ir por partes. Mire, usted siempre ubíquese en el tema en que estamos y comprender ese tema, ¿verdad? Ya lo demás va a ir cayendo por su peso, ¿verdad? va a ir cayendo en su lugar al momento que ya... Eh, hay muchas cosas que las aprendemos sin sentirlas, Fernando, porque las aprendemos sin sentirlas porque son complementarias, ¿me entiendes? Son complementarias, entonces a veces estos complementos en inglés no tienen un significado que nosotros digamos, ah, sí, esto significa tal cosa. No, se necesita que exista otra para que tenga vida y tenga significado esa otra, ¿verdad? En inglés así es, las preposiciones, por ejemplo, con las frases, ¿verdad? Así como nosotros, ¿verdad? No decimos que, ay, ¿cómo decirle? Acostarnos en la hamaca eh, es acostarnos en la cama, es acostarnos en el sillón, acostarnos en diferentes lugares, pero es una sola acción, es una sí. sola acción, ¿verdad? En inglés podemos decir lay down y podemos decir lie down. O sea, te, tenemos diferentes maneras de decir las cosas y son sumamente importantes conocerlas. Y puede ser que no tenga uno, digamos, uno puede decir hasta tiene significados opuestos. ¿verdad? Entonces, por eso es mejor, el mejor tip que puede hacer usted es no aprenderse palabra por palabra y leer palabra por palabra. Leer por expresiones, aprenderse las expresiones. Pero le voy a pasar el link de la, de la cancioncita otra vez bueno, para, que, eh, ajá, para que usted pueda, ahí está ya en el, en el, en el WhatsApp, lo voy a enviar. Y hay que memorizarse esos sonidos. por lo, vaya. Al principio, pues sí se dice memorizar, pero después se mm. va a hacer tan natural si usted lo repite y lo repite y lo repite así incansablemente, le aseguro que en siete días, si usted lo practica, que lo que dura la canción dos veces, ¿verdad? lo que dura la canción dos veces, se quita el audio y anda repitiéndolo a como le caiga por aquí, por allá, por... después lo va a unir. Y en siete días usted va a ver una diferencia, ¿verdad? va a ver una diferencia en 
que le ha dedicado a algo específico. Si nos ponemos a pronunciar todo de un solo, no se nos va a quedar todo de un solo. Entonces, empecemos por ese lado y luego vamos ya palabra por palabra, ¿verdad? expresión por expresión. Y así va a ir subiendo el eh, nivel, ¿verdad? El nivel de pronunciación. Va a ir mejorando la pronunciación, que es lo que a veces nos preocupa, ¿verdad? A veces sí, nos claro, preocupa sí. mucho la pronunciación. Pero eh, tenemos seis cursos de principiantes, así que vamos poco a poco, vamos step by step. Y yo sí le, lo animo a que no vaya a desistir. Vea, aquí vamos wow. paso a paso y uh -huh. siempre hay cuatro habilidades, ¿verdad? Hay unas que se desarrollan más porque tenemos, somos como más, um, o tenemos, digamos, somos como más, eh, estamos más estimulados a eso. Por ejemplo, si en su carrera, que es de software y todo eso, usted mismo me dice, ¿verdad? Que ustedes sí, leen, no ustedes tienen que fijarse en cada detalle, cada pop-up message, ¿verdad? Que les sale, cada mensaje que les sale, leer bien qué que error era y cómo se puede troubleshooting, ¿verdad? Cómo se puede claro, claro, ajá, sí. resolver. Entonces, esas cuestiones, usted las va agarrando, pero las ha agarrado porque no la ha hecho solo una vez. Eso lo ha hecho vez tras vez, la misma uh -huh. palabra le ha salido muchísimas veces que llega usted a comprender el significado. Entonces, lo mismo con la pronunciación, vez tras vez, porque como le repito, son cuatro habilidades, tenemos la habilidad de escribir y a veces no escribimos, entonces, ¿cómo la vamos a desarrollar? Entonces, tenemos que ponernos a hacerlo. Y con la pronunciación, igual, no tenemos un espacio donde pronunciar. Bueno, pongámonos unos audífonos y empecemos, vea. Y bailemos al ritmo y, y que se nos vaya quedando ahí. Vea, hay que disfrutarlo, la verdad. Esto no es de estresarse, sino que hay que disfrutarlo, ¿verdad? Para que se sí, nos vaya no, quedando. Sí. Ok, bueno, sí, pues, Fernando, no, I gracias, hope teacher. to be sí. of help, ok. Ok. So, if you have no more questions, I think we... See you tomorrow, all right? I see you eh, tomorrow. Tomorrow mm -hmm. eh, es este miércoles. Eh, you miércoles are on your way, ajá, ¿verdad? Cabal. Mm -hmm. Vengo más que todo como oyente. Pues ya, ya estoy aquí, espero mañana para okay. ver cómo me conecto. Siempre. Ok, no problem. I understand. I understand. Okay. Pero siempre manténgase conectado, aunque como mm -hmm. le digo, usted vaya escuchando, ¿verdad? Ok. Ok, no gracias, problem, Fernando. Gracias, And have gracias, a very good night. Apoyo. See you tomorrow. Okay. Bye.